Okay, so we're going to continue with our work in Java. I'm going to show you how to do random numbers, and then we'll introduce our first loop, which allows us to repeat uh, code and have it run multiple times. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is a great idea to present both of these, but it turned out that my example for random numbers uh, added a uh, do while loop. So this is the first kind of while loop. So I've already created a project in NetBeans. Uh, the project uh, I think is called Random, and then this class is called Random Demo. And this is going to be a simulator to see how many times we have to roll two dice to get boxcars. Boxcars means double sixes, in case you didn't know. So uh, I've set up some variables here. I have die one, die two, sum, and uh, roll, which is going to be uh, a counter for how many times we roll. Now there's two ways to do random here and I kind of prefer uh, a different way than your book shows. So I'll show you how the book does it too but this is the way I usually do it. So I usually use the uh, random class in java.utilRandom and so I import that. You create a random generator and I almost always call this RND and then to get a random number, you have a series of methods. So here we see random.nextint6. What that does is that gives you a number from a random integer from 0 to 5. And then I add the 1 to shift it over, and that means the range now becomes 1 to 6, which is what a six-sided die will have. Uh, <clears throat> if you're a... Uh, RPG player or Dungeons and Dragons player, you can immediately see that you could do the same thing with 8 to create an 8-sided die or 20 to create a 20-sided die like they have in that game. Your book shows a different method and uh, one advantage of this is this is exactly the way this works in JavaScript. So in your book we use math.random that's going to return a floating point number from 0 to just less than 1 and that just less turns out to be important. So if I multiply this uh, number that I get by 6 you can see that my range would be 0 times 6 which is 0 to just less than 6 and then if I cast that to an integer which changes it from a floating point number truncates the fractional part and makes it an integer, then the range would be from 0 to 5. And then if I add 1 to that, that'll be, again, 1 to 6. So this code will do exactly the same thing. And again, as I mentioned, if you get into JavaScript, this is the exact same way that it works there. Uh, but Java has two kinds of randoms. This is in the math class. The math class is in java.lang, so you don't have to import it, but you do have to include uh, the class because this is a static method. That means I'm not creating a math object. So here, when I import random, which is different, it's a separate class, I have to actually create a random object, RND, to be able to call the methods in the random class. With the math.random, I don't create a math object. I call the methods directly off of the class. So that's called a static class. We'll learn about that bit later on. OK, so let's kind of look at what's going on here. Uh, we have two dies, and uh, we're going to get a 1 to 6 roll on each one. Then we're going to sum the dies up, and then we're going to count each roll. And then we're going to print our results. And uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit more experience here with our printf method that we covered in a previous video demo. And so take a look at how this works. So we have percent %4D, percent %10D, percent %5D, percent %6D. Each percent corresponds to a variable expression that we're going to print. So the first one says, print the number of the roll, this is the roll 1, 2, 3, etc., and use four spaces. Then we have die 1, which is the uh, random first dice of the die, and that's going to be 10 spaces, just moves it over. And then the second die is going to have a five space field, 
And then finally, the sum has a six space uh, field. Now, when I first wrote the program, I just did this without the loop, and I kept rehitting it to keep getting a value. And then I thought it'd be interesting to make it run until I got boxcars. So to do that, I added the do while loop around the code. So here's the beginning of the loop, and uh, here's the end of the loop. And a do while loop is an indefinite loop, and it's called a post test loop. That means that the content here in the loop block, which goes from here to here, will run at least one time because uh, the first time the loop runs, it runs the loop and then it does the test. A pretest loop has the test at the top, and if a test fails, the loop doesn't run at all. So the do while loop always runs at least one time. So if you think about what's going on here, this is really the most appropriate loop to use because I have to have at least one roll, and if I'm really, really lucky, I'll get boxcars on the first roll. Okay? Uh, I kind of wanted to also show you how to format things. So uh, before the loop starts, it's going to go ahead and print out uh, the, the head here, the table, the header. And that's going to have the uh, column headings and then a separator line. And then here in the loop, it'll print out each line of the table. And we don't know how many there are. That's going to go as long as the sum is not equal to 12. So if I have two die and they add together, that means I got two sixes, which is boxcars. And then I'll end the loop and I'll print this uh, divider, which happens to match the one up here. So it's kind of like a, almost like a border for the table. And then uh, it'll print the message here and it'll tell how many rolls. Although you can see that. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go ahead and run this. And uh, if we come over here, I'm going to open this up. And I found out that I can use, uh, as I think it's Control Plus, to, uh, I forgot how to do this. Okay, so let's right click. And uh, there we go, Control Up. Okay, so if I use Control Up, I can uh, make the output window bigger. So uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know how to do that, and that makes it easier now for you to see in the videos the output. So uh, here it took me uh, 12 rolls to get boxcars. And so again, you can see here's the roll column. There's the first die, the second die, and the sum. And so really it wasn't too hard to make this pretty good output. It's pretty nice. And uh, I am doing the output as I go, so that kind of screws up the, uh, uh, the pseudocode. Like normally you would sort of think of this as get, you know, get your input, process, print your output. But really we're doing that as we go. Now uh, it's a little more complicated, but if I really wanted to force the output to happen at the end of the processing, and there's no particular reason to do that, um, I could store the entire table in a long string and then print it out once. Now one reason I might want to do that is if I'm doing a GUI program, which we're not going to learn in Computer Programming 1. Okay, uh, so let's review. To use the uh, javautil.random, you have to import the library. Oops, sorry, I'm having a little trouble here getting this to uh, move over. There we go. Uh, so to, damn it, there we go. Uh, so to use java.utilRandom, you have to do the import. Then you have to create a random object. So random, the name of the object, R&D, equals new random. There's really no reason to have more than one of these because it just generates random numbers. And so out of habit, I would say R&D here, but you could call it generator. Um, Actually, I think uh, Kay Horseman commented on how really the class should have been called Random Generator at one point. Once I had the random object, I have a next int, and I specify the range here. If I don't specify this, it gives me a totally random integer, uh, which could be a very large uh, number. Okay, so usually we want a random number in a certain range. And later on, when we get into arrays, 
you'll see that one of the uh, things you'll do all the time is you won't add anything on here and this value will be the, the number of elements in the array and it'll generate a random index on the array uh, so I'll explain that later when we do arrays that probably won't make much sense to you right now okay uh, then uh, our first processing loop is a do loop so we have do then we have the loop block and then we have the control expression that terminates the loop and so this loop says that when sum is not e uh, while sum is not equal to 12 continue to roll and so that means that when sum is equal to 12 this will be false and then the loop will execute uh, stop executing so that's how the loop works this is a boolean expression it's going to be true or false and we can think of sum as a sort of control variable and it's very important to understand that if I wasn't doing anything to sum in here this would never change and then the loop would be an infinite loop it would never stop and that would be a logical error so uh, this sort of loop always has a control variable and there's some condition on the control variable uh, to indicate and, and that fails and then the loop stops okay so uh, really I'm kind of doing these in an odd order uh, it just turned out that this video does the do while loop before we do the regular while loop and the for loop so the while loops are both indefinite this is the post test loop the body runs one time before the first check if the check is false then the loop won't execute again so it'll always run one time. In the other while loop, you don't have the do keyword, and this is going to go. Let me fix this real quick. Whoops, I forgot to copy it first. So, control copy, control X. And we put this up here. And it turns out that it won't matter here. This will work too because at the beginning sum is equal to zero so that's false uh, I'm sorry that's true sum is not equal to 12 and so what this loop does is it checks first runs the code and then repeats and checks again now it's really important when you use this format not to put a semicolon here because what happens then is that creates a blank statement which is right there between the semicolon and the control and so this block is no longer part of the loop it's just a block that will always run one time so that's a gotcha that you have to be careful for uh, I'll give you another example of this regular while loop the post the pretest while loop but um, again for this program the logic really says that it's better to use the do while because the idea here is we have to do one die roll of the two die I'm sorry one roll of the two die be, to get the box car so we have to roll at least once and so a loop that has to run at least once is a do what again the idea here is I don't know how many rolls it'll take let me run it again I got 12 the first time This time I got it in three rolls, right? So theoretically I could get it in one roll. Now 11, 48, 5, 83, 3. You get the idea, okay? So we use indefinite loops, and in Java there are two, both the do while and the while, when we don't know how many times a loop will execute. A good example of this is when you do input checking. Uh, instead of simply failing when the user gives you bad input, what you do is you keep looping until uh, they give you good input. And that's, uh, we're going to have a, definitely have a, another video demo that shows that. Okay, I hope this is helpful for you. Again, I kind of took on a little bit more, uh, but I wanted the random to be in a decent context where you could see it. Uh, real quickly again, the book uses a different random, which you're welcome to use. You don't have to import the library. It uses the static math class. There's a bunch of useful functions in here. So uh, your sine, cosine, uh, trigonometric functions, absolute value, uh, some other stuff. And the way this works is math.random returns a random floating point number. 
uh, that is from zero inclusive to just less than one exclusive. And then when I multiply that by a value, I'm gonna like n, I'll get a range from zero to n minus one. Uh, and, and that'll be a floating point, so it's not an integer. If I cast it to an integer, that'll remove the fractional part, and then it'll be an integer from zero to n minus one. If I add one, then the range goes from one to n. And so here, the die roll is from one to six, where n is six, right? So I use that. Uh, but normally with an array, what you want is a zero to n minus one, where n is the length of the array. And uh, I understand that won't make sense yet. I'm just kind of telling you that. But you'll remember when you see the arrays, and we'll certainly do many examples with that. That's a real common uh, processing uh, activity that you do. Okay, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, I'm enjoying making them, and uh, it's going to be cool teaching with them and seeing how well they work for you. All right, take care. I'll see you in class. Party on, dude.